of orchestra programs from across the country that sent us videos of our fight song in support of our tragedy back in December and January. Um, in that video, there were over 21 orchestra programs performing from 10 different states across the country. All in all, we got videos from band, choirs, and orchestras all across the country and over 100 recordings. So we're gonna share more with you very, very soon, but we wanted to give you a little sneak preview tonight. That was also the string premiere of our fight song. We've actually never had a string arrangement of our fight song before this year, so we thought what a better way to premiere it than on our first concert in over six months. So good evening everybody, my name is Marissa Weller. I am the director of orchestras here at Oxford High School, and I wanna just thank you so much for joining us, either in person or via our live stream recording um, for tonight's spring concert and our final performance of the year. Our symphony orchestra had a little bit different experience coming back to school. Um, when I approached them, when we had some sessions at the middle school, they had expressed a clear desire to want to perform at festival. And I said, that's fine, but normally we have about 30 to 40 rehearsals, and with the schedule we have right now, we're going to have about 15. And they said, that's fine. I said, so we might need to make up some of those rehearsals. And as a result, they were some of the first students back in the high school in early January. 
So we did some extra evening rehearsals at night. We ended up after snow days and schedule changes and all that fun stuff with 12 rehearsals. And they performed at the District Michigan State Band and Orchestra Association uh, District Festival. And they achieved straight superior ratings, which is the highest rating possible for orchestra their size. <laughs> a letter grade in five categories and the Oxford Orchestra has received A's in all categories from every judge except for one B plus but we still say they got all A's. <laughs> so they had a very successful performance at festival and afterwards I kind of shared my vision of what I thought the spring concert could look like with them and they said let's just jump right in. And the first piece you're going to hear them perform tonight was a request by them. Back when we came back to school, we were doing a lot of social emotional learning activities and just a lot of being present with each other. And so, one of their favorite movies to watch in class was Encanto. They said, Mrs. Waller, you have to find the music for Encanto to, for us to play. And I said, Well, that's great, but a lot of the times, these newer movies that come out, it takes a little longer for the band and orchestra arrangements to get published, right? Because it just takes time for the music. Um, and they were very upset to find out that the band version was published before the orchestra version. So I said, I'm going to keep my eye out and I'm going to check every day. And wouldn't you know it, one Saturday I'm checking at 8 o'clock at night and I'm pretty sure I was the first director to purchase this arrangement of Encanto. So that is the first piece they're going to be performing tonight. It's a medley of songs from the movie, so we hope you'll enjoy that. And then the second piece they're going to be performing is the Paris Symphony. This piece was written by Mozart, but we actually had a very special guest who arranged this, Michael Hopkins, which you'll learn more about in a little bit when we give our world premiere, um, arranged this version for string orchestra, and they just love it so, so much. They're also deciding to uh, perform it as their featured piece on commencement performances in a few weeks. Um, so I think you'll be able to tell that they like both pieces they're playing tonight. So here's the symphony orchestra.
be our finale, and then just a lot more things happen. So now we're gonna do our senior awards. This senior class is very, very special to me because of the fact that when I came to Oxford, they were freshmen in their first year of high school. And they were a class that took a chance on me. They were a very small class, and we went through that first year together, and it was a half year for me. The following year was COVID, so we went through that together and being shut down and doing pandemic learning online and trying to figure out what orchestra is online. Then, of course, we had last year and this year, and so their high school experience and my, the start of my career has been anything but normal. Um, but they have made it so enjoyable and such a positive experience, and I really do believe that they have been the trendsetters and they have been role models for their peers, and they are only showing what greatness is to come in the Oxford orchestras. So at this time, I would like to honor each senior individually for just their knowledge and their experience and their participation in orchestra. We have students that participated in the Oxford orchestras for over 13 years. Um, so as we acknowledge each senior, you're going to see a slide come up with their senior pictures, some of their fun facts about them, and their plans for the future. So Mr. Branchley is going to help me with this as well. And we have flowers for them. And of course, we have to have symphony chocolate to celebrate their symphonic career in the <laughs> Congratulations first to Zoe Beaumont. Congratulations, Frida Lozano. Congratulations to Esme Rhoda. Congratulations to Sophia Sinicola. And congratulations, Mallory Wallace. And Martha Rose Wolf, congratulations. Year that I said I can make it work for everybody. So, um, 
Our first award is the Outstanding Service Award, and this award is given to a student who serves the orchestra in a logistical capacity. So we have our Oxford High School Orchestra Leadership Team, and this student has been on our team since we started it. She's been very proactive in wanting to make sure that um, we get everything that we need to get done and setting a really good foundation for her position in the future. So I'm very ecstatic to award the Outstanding Service Award to Ms. Sophia Sinicola. <laughs> the Michigan School Band and Orchestra, and the Band and Orchestra Association honors a student every year that they call the scholar instrumentalist and this is a student that has maintained a 3.5 gpa or higher throughout their entire high school career and has participated in msboa events like solo and ensemble and district festival and things like that this year there are two students that really stood out to me and I went and I said, okay, the tiebreaker is going to be the GPA. Whoever has the higher GPA is going to be the winner. Well, they have the same GPA. So that didn't help. And you can guess that both of their GPAs were above a four point. Um, and I'm so honored to have both of these students in orchestra. And they have really just set a precedence that shows that orchestra and doing extracurricular activities can be manageable with your academics. In fact, you can excel while doing extracurricular activities. So I'm excited to award this year's Scholar Instrumentalist Awards to Esme Rhoda and Martha Rose Wolf. <laughs> to give the Oxford High School Orchestra Directors Award. This award I feel I give to a student who just shows outstanding dedication and support of the Oxford Orchestras in everything that they do, and this year's candidate is no exception. She has been a part of the Oxford Orchestras for most of her life. She's participated in every extra thing you could think of, like the Oakland Youth Orchestras, uh, Chamber Orchestra, our Pit Orchestra here for the high school, and she has worked so hard to be a great representative of the Oxford Orchestras, and I hope I have many students like her in the future. So this year's Director's Award goes to Ms. Mallory Wallace. Mr. Michael Hopkins to come up and talk about our commissioned work, which is titled The Eternal Light. And he's going to talk a little bit about how the piece came to fruition and how we came to agreement on the title for the piece. Um, I think when you hear that story and you hear the words and the meaning behind that title, you understand why these two students will be receiving what are we, we are now calling the Eternal Light Award. This award is going to be given to an uh, Oxford High School Orchestra student from now until forevermore. And it's just a great reminder of the work that Mr. Hopkins has contributed to our orchestra. And I think you'll hear a lot of hope and resiliency and just a joy and light in the piece. There are two students that are seniors that I feel have just brought a joy and a light to our orchestra. And I cannot imagine an orchestra without them. They are very near and dear to my heart. And I'm so excited that they are the first recipients of this award. And so the Eternal Late Award is going to go to Miss Frida Lozano and Meredith Evans. <laughs> School Orchestra Award. This award is the highest honor that any orchestra teacher can give to a high school orchestra student. 
It is given to a student who shows outstanding musical talent, dedication, demonstrates exceptional character in the program, and just in general is a great contributor to the entire ensemble. This year's recipient is beyond words amazing. She started her freshman year a little unsure about the music thing, and I think she's kind of sure about it now because she's going to do a degree in music education at Central Michigan University uh, in the fall. So she has participated in many, many musical events around Oxford, has participated in many music classes, and every music teacher at Oxford says she's just a delight to have in class. She catches on to music so quickly, and we're so excited that she will represent us at Central very well. So the National School Orchestra Award goes to Miss Zoe Boma. <laughs> as the orchestra person. So he is the person everyone goes to. He is involved on multiple American String Teacher Association committees. Um, he serves in executive roles to help string teachers make decisions and navigate and advocate for their programs. Um, he is the department chair of music education at the University of Michigan and ha has held that position for numerous years. Um, he has written over 80 pieces for orchestra, and so we are very, very fortunate to have him here with us tonight. And he has been with our Oxford Orchestra program since about March. He's been visiting us and learning about the students and learning what type of piece they want and what they enjoy. And I think he has captured that essence perfectly in his work tonight. So could you please join me in welcoming Mr. Michael Hopkins to the stage. contacted by Marissa on February 22nd. I just looked up the date and uh, I was really honored to read her email and, and asking if I would be willing to write a piece for the students here. And uh, so as soon as I read the email, actually, I started, I started writing some ideas down. Um, it just, and I, came, I was able to come up and meet the students for the first time on March 11th. And, uh, and uh, I was working really quickly uh, because Marissa and I talked about it and, and uh, you know, we're trying to figure out, you know, you know, should we do something in the fall? And I said, no, I'd really like to try to write something for the students to be able to perform tonight. And uh, so, so uh, in the middle of all of this, I went to the uh, American String Teachers Conference. I had to go down there because I'm the state president of the chapter of the American String Teachers Association here, and I, a friend of mine uh, saw that the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra was performing Mozart's Requiem Mass while we were down there, so we went on Friday night, and uh, I had been trying to search for a title for the piece. Marissa asked me to write something that was about four minutes long, so not too long, uh, but would uh, capture a, a, a feeling of uh, hope an, uh, an uplifting piece, a piece that had with, was filled with hope and optimism. And, and so, as I was, I, I originally had thought I might call it remembrance. And then, as I was sitting there and I was looking at the words in Latin from the, the Requiem Mass by Mozart, the final movement is, uh, is called uh, Lux Eterna, which in Latin means the eternal light and the, uh, the 
the words uh, contain this line, may the eternal light shine upon them. And I thought that that just really kind of captured what I was trying to get at in this piece where you'll hear a short introduction and then it goes into this, what I call the remembrance theme, which is initially presented by the cellos and the violas and then um, the violins answer and then it goes into a, a middle section which moves a little faster and it's, it's kind of filled with different feelings and emotions that we experience uh, as we try to navigate through a sense of, of loss. And, and then it, the remembrance theme comes back at the end. And then it leads this time to feelings of, of hope, uh, looking as we look towards the future and we we know that those we have lost have moved on to uh, the place of eternal light. So that's what I was trying to capture in this piece, and uh, so I hope you enjoy it. It's been a real great uh, pleasure for me to be able to have this chance to write a piece for these incredible students of yours. Uh, you have a, a wonderful community here and uh, an amazing orchestra director here. Let's give Marissa a uh, orchestra family now so we want to just thank you so much for all of your hard work and appreciate the time you spent with us in our community so thank you
I, I think you realize why it's called the Eternal Light now. Um, there are so many people that made tonight possible, so I just want to make sure that all those people get recognition. Um, the first person I would like to thank is Superintendent Ken Weaver, who actually uh, approved the commission for our piece, so the Oxford Community Schools is providing support for us to be able to get that piece written, so I want to thank him. I want to thank Mr. Jim Gibbons, who's been an amazing mentor and colleague to me and has inspired me to keep moving forward and to keep finding ways to make our program grow. I want to thank John Schmidt, Logan Blair, and their team here in the Performing Arts Center for providing all the technical work they did on tonight's, you know, performance special from our fight song to our senior recognition. They're also the ones that are handling the live stream for tonight's event, so I want to make sure they get thanks. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. James Brezhny, I don't know what I would do without you sometimes. <laughs> he makes my job so easy at the high school because he provides me with fantastic musicians who are just ready to learn and eager to grow, so thank you, thank you for everything you do to get our students ready, and of course I need to thank Mr. Michael Hopkins for the three pieces of his that you heard tonight, and they were just all absolutely exceptional, and our students enjoyed all of them, so thank you again for everything. for all of their support, even with flexible schedules and changing things left and right. They wanted to make sure that our students had a great opportunity to perform tonight, so I want to thank them. And last but not least, I want to thank my husband, who's been incredibly supportive in our first year of marriage and learning what uh, our life is like. And I want to thank my parents who came out tonight, and my middle school and high school orchestra teacher, Miss Kathy Griffith, who came all the way from Girls Eagle to hear us tonight. So thank you all for your support. to make your children these amazing students that I get to work with every day. It's just an absolute blessing to have them in my life and they have been quite a motivation the past few months to wake up every morning and come to work and make incredible music. So my job would not exist without your support and your uh, commitment to their private lessons and instrument rentals and carpool rides back and forth to and from school for dress rehearsals and 6.45 a.m. rehearsals. So students, make sure you thank your parents tonight. And of course, I want to thank the parents of the senior class who uh, have supported their children all the way to graduation. And we made it happen. They're, they're walking in a few weeks, so I think they'll get there. But congratulations, everybody. Congratulations, students, on great performance. And thank you. Good night. Travel safe. Oxford Strong. We'll see you